2015 was the 40th anniversary of a very important exhibition that was organized through the Agnes Etherington Art Center called From Women's Eyes. And it was the first exhibition uh, to examine the work of Canadian historical artists. It was curated by Dorothy Farr and Natalie Lutsky. And we felt that um, an anniversary project, uh, which turned out to be the artist herself, um, was overdue. And uh, we wanted to explore uh, another precept, another concept, uh, a context to consider um, the activities of Canadian historical women artists. We had some very practical challenges in that because the exhibition included um, objects of material culture, both Alicia and I work in art institutions. So for the most part, we're dealing with paintings and sculptures and works on paper, prints. Um, in this instance, because we broadened the concept of self-portraiture to include uh, notions of identity and self-representation through identity, we found that um, we were working uh, more extensively with museums and museum collections. And so there are very different kinds of concerns, um, conservation concerns, travel concerns, and shipping objects such as textiles. Um, we have the samplers and quilts. Um, as well as um, dress. And so uh, we had to work um, a little differently. We had to think a little differently. We worked with uh, very closely with our, um, our respective teams at the Agnes Etherington Art Centre and the Art Gallery of Hamilton, with our technicians, our preparators, and our, collections manager, our collection managers uh, to come up with solutions not only for the safe preparation and travel of these works, um, for exhibition, but also their presentation. So, for instance, the quilt and the button blanket um, are both displayed in a manner that protects them um, so that there's not undue strain on the materials, uh, but also we wanted it to be visually pleasing. So, um, from the standpoint of thinking about how the objects uh, could work together in a space, there were these very practical concerns that we hadn't really come across before. It's not so much a favorite artist as um, objects, let's say, uh, that are included in the, pro in the exhibition. One of the things that Alicia and I were very mindful of from the very beginning was in the selection of objects, we wanted to include both known artists and practitioners, um, as well as lesser known or unknown. Um, also in the context of that project, I should add that wherever possible, we wanted to know the names of these women. Um, and so in that, in that situation, a sort of a personal favorite of mine is um, the Bertha May Ingle, the two works by Bertha May Ingle. Um, not that she's my favorite artist per se in the exhibition, but the process through which we found her was quite interesting. Um, there was a student working with Alicia at the Agnes Etherington uh, in the early phases of this project, and we were asking her to put together um, lists of artists and, and that sort of thing, do some research, but also to open this, the scope of what we were looking for. And in a Google search, she came across um, a website which had been put together by the, one of the descendants of Bertha May Engel. And this was a name that was completely unknown to us. Um, and these descendants had done a, quite a bit of work on Bertha May Engel, um, quite a bit of biographical work, but she had never been uh, included in any um, recent exhibitions, but the work was really, really strong. And interestingly enough, that her self-portrait from the turn of the last century it has in fact become um, sort of a signature image for this project. And we're thrilled by that because as people, you know, that's such an arresting image of her. And um, it's, we're excited by the idea that people will look at that image and say, mm, I don't know, who's Bertha May Engel? And hopefully do a little bit of work. And, and this website has um, innumerable images. They've actually put online quite a bit of her work. So um, that's one work for me that's, that I found really interesting. And the other one, or another one that comes to mind, um, more because of the context of having it in the exhibition, is um, the Maud Lewis um, uh, tea canister. And 
One of the reasons I find I'm so pleased that that's part of the exhibition is because, of course, um, for those who don't know Maud Lewis, um, she was uh, a painter from Nova Scotia um, who filled her small home with painted iteration. Like every, she covered every surface of her home uh, with painted expressions. So Alicia and I really considered that home, which has been reconstituted at the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia as sort of an extended form of self-portraiture. And of course, we couldn't bring the entire structure along with the exhibition. But the idea that we could take one object from the home and have it stand as a representation of her and this kind of painted enterprise um, that, uh, that she undertook, we thought was really interesting. And so when we contacted the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, they were really, really generous because no object had really been taken out. It's a set piece, uh, but they were really generous. And, and we asked them, um, you know, can you make suggestions of something that could come, a, you know, an object of a certain size, of a certain scale, uh, that we could include in the exhibition to represent the greater whole. And, um, and they were able to do that, which we were very, very grateful for. You know, their feedback leads to something else, which was really crucial in the making of the exhibition, which was, um, while we came up with the premise and the concept, we relied heavily, heavily on the expertise of a great number of colleagues, be they other curators, um, art historians, professors, the descendants of artists, and artists themselves, um, to really fill in the gaps in our knowledge. Um, and they are represented through the publication which uh, accompanies the exhibition. Uh, and it's their expertise and their insights which really complete this project. I think we hope that they'll take away a broadened concept of what, what can represent the self, how we reflect ourselves um, in several contexts, um, personally, privately, communally, socially, um, to just to think, think more broadly about what it is that um, how it is that we put ourselves forward in a contemporary society and what does that say about us? Well, in marking the anniversary of Firm Women's Eyes, the exhibition that took place in 1975 to mark International Year of Women or International Women's Year, in marking this 40th anniversary, we decided that we would like to take a look at self-portraiture by women artists. We kind of banded about a few ideas. What we knew we couldn't really do is an exhibition just generally on historical women artists in Canada, because that had been done before. So we thought self-portraiture, because that had never been done before in Canada. It had been done internationally. There are gorgeous books and exhibitions that have focused on women's self-portraiture in the United States and in Europe, but not in Canada. So we thought this was a good opportunity to really take stock of that particular history. But in turning to that art historical genre, what we also knew we wanted to do was to expand the definition of self-portraiture and to look at other possible forms of self-expression. So we didn't, want to, we didn't want to restrict the exhibition to um, just headshots. We wanted to look at other ways in which women have expressed their identity. There were so many possibilities for an exhibition on self-portraiture. And I'm not just talking about paintings. There were a lot there. There were just so many objects that when you start looking at them could be considered as an expression of a woman artist's identity. So we needed to pare down and that was painful. And in fact, um, we printed up uh, images of all these objects and we were at the Art Gallery of Hamilton at the time and we spread them all out and we sp started making groupings and putting certain objects together. So what we were really looking for were dialogues between the objects that they could speak to each other and speak of themselves within the exhibition space. So that helped us narrow it down. So this exhibition is not necessarily a comprehensive overview of self-portraiture by women artists in Canada. Rather, it's an exhibition that offers you suggestions. What do you think about this as a self-portrait? 
what do you think about this as a self-portrait? Or maybe this? Or how does this look beside this? And what do they say to each other? So that was one of the challenges. And what's so fun about having, okay, so that's not a challenge, but it's fun, about having the exhibition travel is that you get to see these objects in different configurations and different stories arise out of these uh, different ways of displaying the objects. Well, like Toby said, it's not so much about a favorite artist, it's more about a favorite object or favorite objects. And one of my favorite objects is the Amounty by Martha Etak. Uh, the Manitoba Museum was very instrumental in finding out the context of this parka, who made it, which was so important for us. With a lot of objects that enter into museums, uh, particularly uh, textile or clothing items, often the original wearer or, and or the person who made it becomes disassociated from the object. So the museum, which loaned this object, found out because the family had contacted them, uh, the, the son and daughter-in-law of the original wearer, Martha Etak. Martha Etak, this was her first Amounty, and uh, Amounty is a mother's parka in Inuit society. And the cut of the parka, the design of the parka, uh, everything about the parka tells people in the community who the person is who's wearing it. So it's a mother's parka because it has a special pouch in the back which would hold her baby. But then there's designs all over the parka that speak about Martha Etak's way of life. Uh, there are, uh, there's a little designs uh, around the yoke and the hood uh, that refers to uh, the caribou tracks in the snow. She would have been uh, following the caribou, which would have been so important for their own subsistence as food, but also for their clothing. The parka is made out of a caribou skin. So showing the tracks of the caribou that they would have followed around on the land because they didn't stay in one place uh, is displayed right there. So there were other little clues in the design on the parka that tells you about who she was. It's a small parka. She was a young woman. She would make at least two other parkas that we know of uh, in her lifetime. The other poignant thing about this parka is that she ended up having to sell it for staples, and that's how the parka ended up in uh, a museum. What we would like for people to walk away from the exhibition with is a broadened sense of self-portraiture. Uh, the rich production by Canadian women artists over the centuries. The exhibition begins in the late 18th century and moves up into the 1960s. It gives people hopefully a sense of how many women were expressing themselves in so many different ways in so many different media. And so that not only gives us a different perspective on Canadian art history and what art really is, but maybe also a different definition of what, what self-portraiture is. And maybe we'll think about and reflect on the, our own ways of self-expression, uh, particularly in the digital age that we live in now. Many people express themselves online and in social media in a variety of ways that uh, not, is not always centered on the face.